Welcome back to the Cinema Cult Network. I'm Chris. I'm Matt. And I'm Honto. And we are starting our Italian Giallo Month with Honto's pick called Stage Fright from 1987, I believe. Yep. Uh, a movie I don't think any of us had seen. Is that correct? Uh, I yeah, I haven't seen it. I've seen it a few times. Now, now, okay. This okay. was on your top. When we did our slasher episode uh, when we covered Friday the 13th when we were doing the, the TV show. Oh, yeah. A couple years back. Yeah. Uh, this was on your top five. It was up there. Yeah. Oh, wow. I totally forgot. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. This Because I think this is the only one on your top five I hadn't seen. Oh, okay. uh, no, no. Mad Men. Yeah. Mad that was Man. in your top five, too? That's my favorite of all time. Is it? Was it really? I don't know. I can't remember. It's okay. You're allowed to be honest. I just don't remember that episode. Yeah, I totally forgot Stage Fright was in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we watched this recently. I had never even heard of it, to be honest with you. Um, and I don't think Matt really knew much about it either. Is that correct? Uh, no, I've, I mean, I've seen stuff for it, but never actually yeah. seen the movie. And it's always well, confusing because there's actually like a stage fright from 2014. I saw that when I was like, well, there's also the yeah. Hitchcock stage fright. Yeah, yeah, but this one, the slasher from 20 something, 2014 or whatever, is like, I'm not sure if it's a direct remake or like supposed to be a remake. It's the same kind of premise. What there. I read it was it was somebody who's going around killing people because he hates musicals. Oh, so it might be a little different. Okay. Might be a little different. Um, I do have a few numbers on this movie. We've done a lot of cult films lately, and we do not have a lot of fun numbers on it. But this one, we do have a couple. Stage Fright from 1987. What do you think it has on Rotten Tomatoes Honto? 62. Matthew? 55. 88%. Hmm. And I do not have any box office figures for this movie, but I do have a budget. Okay. Stage Fright. What was its budget? Matt, I'll start off with you. Is this USDs? USDs. <clears throat> Uh, three million. Honto. 2.1. 1 million. Oh. Yeah, very modest budget. Damn. So I'm sure with the video rentals and everything, it uh, it made a profit for sure. I would think. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> so Honto, take us to the cast and crew of Stage Fright, please. Directed by Michelle Suave. Uh, we actually probably best known this guy as an actor from a movie that we were just talking about before this the show, Demons. He's the the, the metal mask guy. Which is, I think, is the main villain. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Okay, so who is he in this? Uh, he's is he the director. He's the director. But he's also he's... in this. He's, is he? Yeah, he's the cop in the patrol uh, car, the younger one that looks like James Dean. Uh, okay. okay, I'm confused. Yeah. yeah. So the director. Is, oh, okay. I'm the sorry. The director okay, is yeah. in the movie. Sorry. This is I was thinking the, of the director direct, of the, the play. The director of this movie, Stage Fright, is the guy, the James Dean guy. Yeah, yeah the James Dean guy. And he also plays the, the mask guy in yep. Demons. Cool, very yep. cool. And then Matt and I just actually just watched him in a movie called Atlantis Interceptors, a.k.a. Raiders of Atlantis. Oh, shit, really? Yeah, I think he's one of the the survivors in that movie. Yeah, he's not the main guy. No, 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 no. I think he's one of the... I, I would have to watch it again, but I think he gets killed pretty yeah, uh, I'd have to watch pretty it horrifically. Again. I'd watch it again. Uh, but yeah, he's also in City of the Living Dead. He's also... Wow, like, all I think, movies we've been talking about. Yeah. Uh, he's also best known for directing Cemetery Man. A movie that is very hyped, and I think it's fun. Because who's in it? Is it like Rupert Everett or something? Uh, for My Best Friend's Wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then... Um, Matt, why'd you look at me when I is said it? that? Yeah. 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 I he's watched the star it with, of it. I watched it with Chris. I don't remember yeah. Rupert. He's, he's the main guy. He is the main guy. Is he really? Yeah. He's the Cemetery Man. Oh, I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah. I remember thinking it was fine. I didn't love it. Oh, I liked it. Yeah. yeah I, liked I, it. It was okay. I had the soundtrack to this, and it's my like probably my least favorite soundtrack that I own. Really? Very not great. It's very generic sound. Soundtrack. Okay. Okay. Uh, but he also has directed a movie called The Church, which I've never seen, but... I'm sure we've all seen the. I think it's um, on Shutter. I think okay. it's an Italian uh, horror movie, but the, yeah. the poster or the cover is very like memorable. I think it's on yeah. Amazon Prime as well. I've whole, seen it streaming, but I've never watched. I think it. the whole premise is that is that they dig up a church that was buried, and then there's like zombies or sure. something sure. gets unleashed. Uh, David Brandon as Peter. He, this guy is the director of the of play. The, state, okay. the, the okay. play in stage right. Um, not a lot of stuff that I noticed him in, but. Um, the Blade Master, which looks like a knockoff of Conan, because in the the okay. picture it's like a very Arnold looking like person. Really, okay. and it's like a typical like sword and sorcery picture. Uh, he's also in this movie called She, San starring Sandhel Bergman, who's also in Conan. So it's kind of like a just want to bring those two up. Okay, and then the one the one that I'll uh, the last one I'll bring up of his is called Eleven Days, Eleven Nights. Uh, oh, with Anne Hache. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Harris Ford. No. Um, It'll be popping up more throughout this casting crew. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, we got Giovanni Lombardo uh, as Brett, who's the um, the gay guy. Okay. Who okay. is like wearing the mask in the beginning. Uh, he's also in City of the Living Dead 
house on the edge of the park. Now we just watched City of the Living Dead this past October. I know. October. Yeah, yeah, it's I, like all these people. I can't are, remember. All these people are popping yeah, up. These are all anything. movies that we've seen. This I haven't or, seen in years. So City of the Living well, Dead. I'm saying like years, yeah. just popular Italian sure, horror sure, titles. Sure, yeah. Like Cannibal, uh, Cannibal Ferox. Okay. He's also in the Church, which I mentioned earlier, and also Eleven Days, Eleven Nights. <laughs> Oh, the Anne Hage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then we have Laura Donna Parelia as Corinne. Is just, she our main character? No, she's not. Okay. I'll get to her. All right. <laughs> uh, this actress was in 11 Days, 11 Nights. I've heard of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then we have Joanne Smith as Sybil. The only thing that was on, she's only been like in, I think, the two movies, this and another movie called Cloud Dancer, okay. uh, which stars uh, David Carradine and Colleen Camp. Okay. Uh, then we have Colin Rock. Camp. All yeah. right. Yeah. There you go. She's also in Die Hard 3. And you ever notice that? The yeah, maid, that's weird. The maid from Clue. I haven't Di- seen Clue in probably 10 years. Okay. Oh, yeah. well, the maid. Yeah, it's like the, the maid. maid from Clue. Okay. Yeah, she's um one of the cops in Die Hard. She's the one that saves the kids. In, in Die the, Hard 3? In the school. Yeah, Die Hard 3. Okay. The one who's I mean, like, she's got like a completely different hairstyle. She's one of the main cops? Yeah. Yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but that's Colin Camp. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And she's in the original Get Out. What? Calling camp. Get yeah. out? Or not get out. Uh, get smart? Uh, no. Um, uh, get boogie? Oh my God, what am I thinking of? I was thinking of the Eli Roth movie. Get food? <laughs> yeah. Get, oh, that movie. Get, get food? food? Get food. Oh, that's otherwise known as the uh, yeah. alternate title for Thanksgiving. Knock, knock. Right, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's in the original knock. Okay, okay. okay. Why did I say get out? Wait, what's the original knock up or knock knock? What's yeah, they just, I remember they had that just uh, not too long ago in Cincy. Um, they were playing a double feature. It was Knock Knock plus the original. Yeah. Hold yeah on. What's the original though? I'll look it no, up. I don't it's find it's got a different name, but oh, yeah. okay. Well, okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Um uh I think I left off with Robert Gling or Gorov as Sting. Okay. Or otherwise known as Danny in this movie. Copy. Uh Eleven Days, Eleven Nights. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then we have Martin Phillips as Mark. Um, he is the guy that gets drilled uh okay. in the, yeah. the door. Yeah. 11 Days, 11 Nights. Okay. Uh, Piero Viata as Ferrari, the guy that kept showing up. He looked like he's a, like a, a hard-boiled detective, but he's actually like a producer okay. of the show or okay. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Deep Red, a.k.a. Profondo Rosso. Interesting. And Ooh. he's also in the original Man on Fire. Do you know the original Man on Fire starring Scott Glenn, previous episode Training Day? He plays the Denzel Washington role. I didn't Very realize that was a remake. Yep. Very wow. I think it's Michael. It might be Michael Mann. I would no, have to, it's not. Okay, I would have to look it I'm up. But yeah, man, but I've never. That's cool though. Same thing <clears throat> where it's like same character and everything. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and then we have Claim Parker as Irving Wallace, which is the killer. Okay. Eleven days, eleven nights. That's all I wrote. And then we have James Samson. Samson as Willie. This is the um the the black janitor. Yeah. The black, yeah. Um, yeah. He's in a movie called Robot Jocks, uh, which I've seen a bunch on Sci-Fi Channel. It's like really? a typical mech warrior yeah. 80s movie. Yeah. Terminator 2, uh, Roman numeral 2. It's an Italian remake of or like <laughs> an attempt at a Terminator movie. Awesome. Uh, he's in Zombie, City of the Living Dead. He's also in Absurd. Uh, and which then is the sequel to... To Anthropophagus? Yeah, Anthropophagus. Anthropophagus. Or Grim Reaper. Yeah. Uh, which is a connection to George Eastman, who we just watched... An- we all three just watched Anthropophagus on yeah, Friday night. I, I didn't make it through. Uh, the main monster. Yeah. Which is George Eastman. Oh, okay. Wrote this movie. That's... Okay, I was... I think I had something on it, but yeah. Okay. He's okay. also in... He's also in... Um, uh, uh, absurd, which is that sequel? Is yeah. sequel playing the same? Okay. Same character. It's like almost like a remake. It's weird because is it? it's like okay. it's just the same concept where it's like a cannibal character, but That's like not, yeah. one is about this guy who went crazy with his family, and then yeah. the um the absurd movie is about like a, a priest that becomes yeah. a monster cannibal. Or okay, but it's the same same idea. Pretty disappointed okay. by this for hearing about it forever for an- and anthropo- seeing, seeing st- yeah, seeing yeah. stuff for it. Finally getting around to watch, and I was I was kind of disappointed. Yeah, yeah, I agree with Matt on that. Uh, he's also a New York Ripper, uh, Escape from the Bronx, which I want to watch. It's like kind of like a uh, kind of like a futuristic Warriors or meets or you know the Warriors meets the Is that future. Escape from Bronx. Nine, there's there's that, and then there's um there's two versions: Escape from the Bronx and then Bronx Warriors nineteen ninety. Bronx Warriors nineteen ninety. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Uh, and then he's also in uh, Eleven Days, Eleven Nights. 
I feel like we have to watch this movie. <laughs> I looked up the plot. It looks very just generic. Does it's it, like okay. nothing like, um, you know, whatever. That, and then, the, plot, the plot part is like the cast of Stage yeah. Fright reunites. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Barbara Kapisti, who is our main survivor, main heroine in this movie, who we didn't really know throughout the, the watching of this. Uh, she stars as Alicia. She is, I think, the main girl in Cemetery Man. She's also in The Church. She's in opera and she's in 11 days, 11 nights. <laughs> the Her cast and crew reunites. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I put up your 11 days, 11 nights film. I, I had some, some stuff on it. It's soft core erotic drama. Nice. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. It was listed as like uh soft core pornography. Okay. I guess is what it is. Uh, and I will say that uh, the director of this Joe D'Amato. Yeah. He directed a lot of the Emmanuel movies. Oh, did he? Yeah, and okay. he also directed Matt Por- is our expert. Uh, yeah, Emmanuel I have never movies. seen an Emmanuel movie. He directed Porno Holocaust, which I think we've seen like the title or whatever. Maybe I, I see because it it's next to like Cannibal Ferox and Cannibal Holocaust. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, but he also directed Anthropophagus and Absurd. Oh. Interesting. Okay, so that's um, that's the director of Eleven Days, Eleven Nights. Uh, Colin Camp movie. I looked it up. It was uh, Death Game. That's the the original super generic title. OK, okay. G- death game. That's why I couldn't remember it. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. That's why I was confused. I was like, I've never heard like a, a knock knock. Uh, yeah, it's the original. It's, it's the original it's the same knock, plot, knock. basically. Same plot. Yeah. Okay, got so it. this movie you keep talking about the plot is very it's very small. Well, this is yeah. 11 days, 11 nights. Yes. Yeah. On a boat ride in New Orleans, Michael, a yuppie meets writer Sarah for her publish. She's a writer Okay. for her publisher. Sarah needs to finish an autobiography about her 100 erotic conquests and chooses her chance acquaintance. Michael as her last crowning conquest. However, he's about to marry Helen. <laughs> Michael and Sarah strike an erotic pact for 11 days and 11 nights and live through a number of sexual adventures with each other. Oh, okay. Coming so, to a cinema call podcast near you. That's the after dark, <laughs> you know, after, uh, shh, yeah, that's no uh, kids allowed. Yeah. That's uh, I don't, I don't think we'll be doing that one. So, um, yeah. we're not going to do an erotic cult, uh, month. I'd probably not. With, if, uh, if the viewers, the if the viewers requests or ask for it, we will. We're do not going to do Red Shoe Diaries and the Manuel. Starring movies. David Duchovny. We're not going to go through your DVD collection. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> oh man, unopened. Oh dang it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that Joe D'Amato director of that movie. I mean, like everything on his filmography was like, like Showtime, After Hours, oh, yeah. Skin okay. Max. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's like okay. We get okay. It. All right. That's it. For okay. Crew. So going through stage fright, I will say at some point it does kind of get, it's kind of like a, um, like kill by numbers type movie, but to set it up, it's about a half an hour of setup. Uh, not what I'll be saying, but the movie itself. Um, <laughs> so basically it starts off as a play. You see like this play is being presented, which it, is a cool opening. The first it, like five, six minutes. Yeah. And you kind of make it look like it's like the, the beginning of the first kill or whatever. And it's, then it's yeah. like. It goes well, they, into, they basically kind of like mimic uh, other Giallo films. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. mimic a, like a stereotypical Giallo film. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I didn't think and about that. It's kind of cool they do that. Yeah. And then um, it's Full. one of those things where, like when the director stops the play because he's like, he's an artistic jerk and he yeah. like my vision. He, wear, he wears an ascot. So, you know, he means business. Yeah. Yeah. And which I kind of, I mean, I like this director character, but like just be, make him a normal guy. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be always kind of like, not pretentious, but like uh, everything you're doing is wrong. Yeah. Like you listen to me. Like it's I a, think of um, it's a very uh, Scream Two director. I was just gonna say that you cut me off. I was talking. I was getting ready to talk about Scream yeah. Two. I don't remember that. I think he's fine in Scream it's, uh, Two though. David Warner in uh, Scream Two and uh, Sydney's in that play. David Warner's in Scream Two. He's yeah. the director. He shows up for just that scene. Though. Is he you really? don't remember that, yeah. dude? Yeah. I was drunk when I watched it with you guys. Yeah, but yeah. you've seen it not. Drunk. And then we did a podcast drunk about it. <laughs> yeah, but we we're we we also drank. We remembered. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, because you guys yeah. love that movie. I it's pretty good. It's got yeah. some cool parts. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's David Warner. Like David shows Warner. Up. Maybe you've seen it. I have to check it out again. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, basically, this play is supposed to go on in the next, like, four or five days yeah. or something like that. Um, they're cutting it really close. It's like they're anticipating, like, box office record numbers for this. Yes. So, they decide to have, like, the shut-in. Yes. That's the, that's the plot. And... Th- um, okay, so it's very confusing. We talked about this watching the movie. It's very confusing to find out who your main character is because uh-huh. they look similar to other females. Yeah, there are the several girls. Yeah, there are several girls in there that look identical. 
Especially it's like her hair is wet because she was out in the rain. Now she looks like a different character. And she has yeah. a wig on at first. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's a yeah. lot of like, which one is she again? Oh. Um, but I guess she hurts her ankle. Yep. That's her whole like, this is like the start of why things go wrong. Oh, yeah, she does hurt her ankle. Because if she didn't hurt her ankle, she be none of this would have happened. Well, they wouldn't have gone uh, not to a hospital, but to an, like an insane asylum. It's so bizarre. Yeah. So she hurts her ankle. They have to sneak out the back. And there's this whole thing where like, hey, we got to get out the back. We can't let the director know. And so there's like this like uh, maintenance man or he's like the housekeeper or whatever yeah. of the theater. Uh -huh. And they have to get him to let him out. And so they go to see a doctor to fix her ankle. But her friend takes her to a psychiatric ward and she's like, they got to have doctors. And as ridiculous as that sounds, like, I don't know much about this. Yeah. But then there happens to be a doctor who does look at her ankle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is even more I, odd. I, I, would, I would think that they have to have, um, you know, that's not not too out of the norm because you, you have to have some sort of first aid medical assistance. Sure, but I don't think you would have one that would openly see yeah, patients. Yeah, no, 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 yeah no, I can't even get into my own doctor's office like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Let alone a mental right. institution. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, there. Yeah. It's real. There's a couple of things in this movie that are really dumb. Oh yeah, this being one doesn't ruin it though. It's not like it a, doesn't ruin it, but it's, it's just it's the, a stretch. This the setup is so outrageous in a way where yeah. it's like, okay, yeah, yeah. Like that's even we'll get to it, but the shut in. Yeah, like yeah. it's kind of like really. Oh, I totally agree with you on that yeah. aspect. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, they go to the doctor. Uh, you brought up this ankle thing, and she doesn't lean on this ankle at all for the rest of the movie. No, she's totally fine. She's not like limping after she, yeah. she had chased. You, well, because I think the doctor I tells her that you should be good for four or five hours. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's what, what she says. gave him like a shot of like adrenaline or something. Probably, but yeah, yeah. But this movie pretty, pretty much takes place in real time, so it's like I'm not. I would say four or five hours. I'm calling bullshit on the continuity uh, expert on this movie that she should be limping for the rest of the film. I think it would made things a little bit more interesting. Yeah, if it had worn off. If the main character had like a, a serious injury, say like a broken leg or no she head. Could, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. She like, lost her head like a broken or like a like a like a sprained whatever, you know, so she's on crutches. So, yeah, that's our main character. And that's pretty you good. Feel like a lot of yeah. terror. It's like scream yeah. six or scream five. Yeah. yeah. The most recent scream. How many yeah. is there? But five. then you could yeah. also tell yeah, like who's the wheelchair. Who. Basically. Yeah. yeah. But you could tell who's who. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's like the one limping is our yeah. main character. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. OK. Uh, yeah, and it would be cool if it wore off as the movie continued. So it's kind of like you progressively saw her getting like weaker. So you're like, oh man, the stakes yeah. are high yeah, because she's coming up to the last ones. I don't even think that because like I, there'd be that awkward scene where she's running down the hallway and she's like energy at 100%. And she's like, D -d 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 -d, and she starts yeah. running even faster. Yeah. And you're like, finally, the time has worn well, that's off. A, that's when she takes I'm her. I'm uh, charged. That's when she takes the Batman adrenaline shot. She's like, Aah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so fast. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> um, so yeah, she is the mental institution or psychiatric, yeah. whatever you want to call it. She gets her ankle kind of fixed. And, and she in didn't... the meantime, they see a, yeah. a patient who's there who, while being like addressed by one of like the orderlies, I guess he takes the orderly, stabs something in it, like a needle in his neck, escapes, Climbs into the car of the two girls who are yeah. visiting, and then they drive him back. Um, but yeah, that's what I mean. This is one of the situations where had they not gone there, there'd be no plot. Well, and he's also a theater obsessed like character. Oh, yeah. Right? Catch that. yeah, he's like obsessed some, with the theater. They mentioned in the headlines or like something like that, okay. where he killed a bunch of people in the theater. Okay, right. I, I mean, like this is your favorite. Here's your top five slash. I know you don't know. So, this. <laughs> so when I saw the description on, on Shutter, it was like, that's what it's about. I thought it was just like an escape. I admit it's yeah. such a minor detail. It is. It's a minor detail. Where it's like, I didn't even catch that. And like, even I like, I'm trying to recall if that's actually even, said. even they see the newspaper. They said like Irwin, whatever Wallace killer. And then there's like an offhand, like, or like a side remark by the director who's like, I'm changing. It's almost like he's changing the, the plot to be about. He is. The killer. Yeah, he's changing the plot because like, it's so minor that like I actually didn't even notice that until this viewing. I've seen yeah. this like three times. But for the uh the guy to get to the car that's for an actual theater. Yeah. That's like if like you were the hot topic masker and like these people from Hot Topic came in and you're like, Oh, I got into their car and then the movie took place in a hot topic. You know what I mean? Oh. Nope. Like <laughs> me neither, dude. That sounds like a shitty movie. <laughs> Right, I guess. Oh. What's well, that? It's, it would be the guy killing. He's a huge fan of Hot Topic. He randomly kills people. 
Yeah. He hops in the trunk and then those people happen to drive Work in. at a hot topic. No, no, they happen to drive into the hot topic. Oh, okay. There He's you like, go. Oh, my favorite store. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the irony. And like we have to lock do a lock in because we're we gotta do inventory for the year. Or yeah, something. we're doing a lock in. <laughs> we're not leaving to the end. The register is completely counted. <laughs> uh, you can say the same as like as a practical joker, and then they drive into a Spencer's. Yeah. And then they're like, we got to do inventory. What the hell is that different? What the hell is the difference, man? I love how, like, my idea is stupid, but your, your store is literally right next to mine. And you're like, somehow the Spencer's idea is going to be better than the Hot Topic one. Camelot Music. Dude. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. KB Toys. Well, no, I, yeah. I know that one. Yeah. That one is, that's a, that's an that, obscure that's one. That's a memory that was just locked way down yeah. up until now. Yeah, so I go into these trends. Here's a tangent. I go into these trends when I'll type in like 90s TV commercials or 90s like oh, yeah, store yeah. ads. I've watched them, yeah. And um, not too long ago, I typed in, I can't remember exactly what I was searching for, but Camelot Music Ad popped up and my mind was blown. Wow. And I was like, Holy yes. moly. Yeah. Um, I was pretty uh, pretty excited about that because we had a local mall that had Camelot Music. It had a few music stores, Camelot Music, and I can't remember what the other one was. The one that I knew of was Record Town and then mm. Sam Goody. Sam, yeah, Goody. Sam Goody, yeah. I remember Sam and then Goody. And there, there was something like, in place of Sam Goody before Sam Goody. Okay. I can't remember. And there's like, uh, you yeah, got like your media play. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say media play was after though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. was like the two. There's supposedly or... an awesome documentary by Colin Hanks about oh, media uh-huh. play. Um, I think it's on Hulu, and I've heard nothing but good things about it. Really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to check it out. So stage fright. Um, how do we get to that, Tan? Sorry. So she leaves the hospital. Her and her friend leave the hospital after her legs all wrapped up. They make it back to the theater, and the director promptly fires her. Yeah. Because, because she she's left not supposed the, to leave. Yeah, she's yeah. not supposed to leave. Her friend goes back out to the car. She does. She runs the makeup department. She goes out yep. to the car. She they, was like, what'd she say? I left the lights on. Yeah, she left the lights on. And she's our first victim. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what's cool? And I, I one of the, the one of the positives I do like about this is I thought she was gonna die. And then like the killer goes inside yep. and chaos ensues. Yeah. But immediately, like the body is found, everybody's freaking out. The yeah. Cops come yeah, there's a whole up. like um a, a whole talking part part of this movie. Yeah. And I kind of appreciated that that it was yeah. like it yeah, wasn't just that like, it wasn't like yeah. one of those secret kills. Because then that's just like basically minutes, and I know yeah. you'll probably dogmount it, but that's literally every Friday the thirteenth. They're just stuck in the trade trade to theater department or whatever, theater for a camp you bite, your, yeah. bite your tongue. La, 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 la. <laughs> uh, but yeah, then they. But yeah, it's they just qui- he quietly kills one, everybody. One, one, and then you're until the, the last girl finds all the bodies. Like, and at no point in any of those movies is there like a pers- uh, a police procedural. Yeah, you don't know there's a cop. There's, you don't know anything's happening until the end. Yeah, when the main character, finds which I, this was refreshing to yeah. see the cops show up and they're like, "All right, so this is what's yeah. going on." Um, and then journalists show up. And then the director talks to the journalists and they say that uh, that basically their their play is about this killer all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. He changes everything. He's like, And it's weird because the character of the director is kind of like you kind of like him. Like, because he's kind of like, look, he, what happened to her is a complete tragedy. Yeah. And you're like, okay, cool. He's a good guy. Yeah. And he's like, we he's can, like, it we, sucks we, farts, but we, we're going we to continue use to play. This. <laughs> yeah. He's very like up and down, which is weird because then he ends up like becoming the main character for it's kind of wild. wild. He, it's kind of yeah. wild how his, uh, his shift eventually when it becomes real, how he kind of becomes like the hero in a way. Yeah, he does. It's very oh, odd. Yeah. He becomes kind of the main. I honestly. Up until it's spoiler, awesome. he dies. It's awesome though. He is the main character in this movie because this yeah. girl is not it's, the main character. It's my favorite kill in the movie. Yeah, his. Yeah, I have to. We have to talk, when we get there, we'll talk about. I'm it. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't even remember it. Yeah, we'll oh, get really? There. We'll get there. It's nuts. Yeah. Oh, I do remember. Yes, yeah. I'm there. Um. So they go back inside. They talk about how they're gonna continue the play. Um. He gives the key to he, this woman. It's one of the. Um. I think it might be. She's one of the actresses because she gets yes. killed on stage. Yes. Which is a very intense scene. So that's another cool thing that it's unexpected. So the killer puts on the mask of the killer in the play. Yeah. And while they're practicing. Very meta. He's yeah. playing himself yeah. in the play now. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Um, and while they're acting, he ends up killing the girl on stage in front of everybody. And they're kind of like, Wait, I think is the, this really happening? Because it's like, um, 
the the scene is supposed to be him strangling the actress or whatever. And then he pulls out a he's knife. He's like, strangle her! He's like yelling, yeah. and then he pulls the knife, and he's like, that's not in the play. Yeah. yeah, and it's a pretty intense scene because it's very like, oh, we're doing this in front of everybody. And then he kills her, goes off, and then they're all like totally sympathizing with her. And they're like, are you okay, okay? Like, this is a very intense scene. Yeah. And then they're like, she has the key. And you're like, where's the it, key? It's kind, like, of, it's kind of a hilarious shot because it's a POV shot of her. And it's like everyone's surrounding her, asking about the key. And then Ferrari, that uh, hard-boiled detective that's like the money guy. Yeah. He's like, where's the key? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like kind of a ridiculous yeah. looking. Yeah. What do you what do you guys think of this whole lock in premise? It's fine. I think it's like I think it's good. I like I'm a I'm a sucker for like isolated same, uh, same. horror movies. I feel like it's a little forced. It's forced for sure. Yeah. I mean, like it doesn't yeah. ruin it though. It doesn't ruin it, but I feel like it's a little force of an, a reason. Because like when he was like he talked to her and he's like, Hey, I'm gonna lock this place up and I'm giving you the key. I was like, Oh, what is he getting at? And they're like, all right, we're really going to knock this play out tonight. Well, no. I was like, wait, you just locked in everybody so they'll work on the play? No, I think, uh, I mean, it's another minor comment, but I think he, he talks about how the play has the potential to be, become like a box office success, basically. Yeah. And he's more about making money than... Yeah, but he's locking yeah. everybody in, but yeah. so they'll do the play. Like, yeah. he could have just gave this spiel to all of them. Like, hey, do you guys mind staying the night and... No. Uh, that's 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 uh that's kill this thing you know like, there'd be no movie yeah yeah but i, I know i know and then but it's, it's the same, with going, going, same with going to the insane asylum yeah. it's the movie. trick with isolation thrillers <clears throat> yeah. it's there's like always you, a there's always a gist of why are they yeah you know which are really hard now to make because cell phones are you gotta get rid of cell phones yeah and there's always got to be a reason why you got rid of that's why rid of cell that's phones. why whenever you see any like horror movies like they have them set in the middle of like, especially if it's like a woods movie or whatever, they have yeah. to be like somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. Like, Oh no. Oh, I forgot that the, this area is a dead zone for cell phone activity. Yeah. I don't, or they I don't take have place any bars. In like the early 2000s. Yeah. Like 90s. Yeah. 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 But now it's like, you can get cell phone reception pretty much anywhere. So it's like, it's still unbelievable. You know, Not so it's like, I don't, service. what was the last, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Tell people so they don't get it. What was the last isolation thriller that you guys saw that really worked? That was P- Pontypool. Okay. That's like a buried. Yeah, I mean that's totally doable. Frozen. It has to take place final exam in a time that the movie came out. I will say that. Yeah, Yeah. Pontypool. It's a it's a radio show DJ basically getting stuck inside the radio station. Oh yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I haven't seen it. But like, it's cool because like you don't really see the outside. It's all that's cool. Him talking to the people over the radio. Yeah, I would say uh, don't breathe. Yeah, it was good. Reason. Yeah, and I think it's good because it's like There's they like, aren't supposed to be there, and that's why they're not calling the cops. Yeah, that's you know a good. I mean? Exam is pretty dope. Exam is a pretty alright movie. Yeah, I liked Exam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's, I saw a long what's time the ago. premise with Exam? Uh, I think it was. A, it's been a, a couple of years. It's probably like a 2014, 2015. They're all there for a secret. They're all there for a job interview. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And then they have to take this exam to get the job, and it's like this super. Inti- they're all like locked in this room. And like the reveal at the end is pretty cool because it's like they all want this job. It's really yeah. cool. It's How really do they cool. get rid of the cell phones? I think they dump them. I think, yeah, because to... you're going for this interview. So yeah, you gotcha. Cell phones, gotcha. So. Yeah, the, prem- yeah, the premise is cool for that because it's like a, the, the sheet is blank. Yeah. And then it leads to a talking movie of them figuring out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. They're, it's like, like, well, they're like, what's the question? Like, what are we supposed to do? Yeah. And then like, they're like trying to put it together. And it's and... like a chain reaction of like stuff happening. Yeah. Yeah. What about it's... Pontypool? How do they get rid of the cell phones? Do you remember? Um, I think it's uh i think because of the cell towers i think yeah it's all just radio so i think they're trying to the communicate there are a couple of people they talk to uh over cell phone or the radio frequency well i guess it's yeah. different because it's zombies so yeah. it's not like they're like hey we're calling for help like yeah you and everybody else yeah. yeah it's more of like um the radio is is spreading the news yeah he wants to make people aware so he stays on the air to talk about what's going on Okay, okay, cool. So, Very cool. It's pretty cool. So at this point, the movie does become more of like for the next 40 minutes, kind of like a cookie cutter, like, you know, kill by number. Uh, if they, even if that's a thing. Yeah, they don't do very like many isolation. Kind no, because they, kinda... they split up for a moment. It's like the guys go one direction, the girls go the other. But it's like they're looking for the key. Yeah. And then I think um, they see a body here. I think that gets swung into them, I thought. And they, okay. s- they split up and they go back to... This is where they, they figure out to go to the... the oh, yeah, because the guy who uh, who's paying them all gets, killed, gets killed immediately after the girl on stage gets yeah, killed. Yeah, th- th- this is ridiculous because they, like, 
like, all right, let's break. And then he stays behind to count the money or whatever. And then it falls out of the briefcase. But it's like it's a like total, um, like, pitch black death where it's like the, the survivors are running off and he gets left behind in the dark and it's like he gets killed. Yeah. yeah. Or whatever. And it then, is. And it's very sudden. As yeah. Well. Um, but we do have a cool scene where they're like all in the dressing room. Yeah. And actually, this scene's actually pretty shocking. This might be the most shocking scene of the movie for me is that um, the killer's trying to come through the door. He's like kicking it open. And I think they hold it uh hold it closed and then uh i think it's mark or mike or whatever yeah. he's one of the, i think he's like the assistant to the director yeah he gets drilled which is cool because they haven't established that you're screwed you're screwed uh, yeah they haven't established the killer yeah. has like this type of weapon and then he went to the, the tool workshop and i think that's when he realized yeah. uh the director or somebody was like oh god he got you know, the drill yeah. press. <laughs> yeah, which you pointed out. Yeah, that drill presses aren't. It's like, like a stationary. Yeah, it's a stationary tool. Like the base is attached to it. Like, yeah, what he kills him with is just a is a is a drill, not a drill press. Right. right, right. Like you can't take it off and all of a sudden it's a drill. Gun. It's like one or the one or nothing. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. Maybe that's how they made it back in the 80s or maybe like a detachable piece or something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they didn't, though. I'm pretty sure it was like regardless. It's really cool. Yes, that's a good death. Yeah, it's very shocking and it's done very well. Yeah. Um, and but then Matt pointed out, like, he was like, I hate movies like these because if they just stayed in this room and oh, barricaded yeah. the door, yes, the movie's over. The problem fine. with all isolation movies yeah. is if, like, if you find safety, it's like, yeah, you guys can, there's six yeah, of you, first it can, off, because, you could all yeah, just gang up against him. Well, no, in the 80s, they attack one by one, so. Yeah, <laughs> you, they can't kill you all. <laughs> But on top of that, it's like, hey, if you just hang out in this room, like, you guys should be good till yeah, Sunday. Yeah, because that's why I don't put that in the movie. Or don't sunrise. put a, a room they can barricade in. Right. Maybe, like, there's plenty of dressers. He sets in the there. room on fire and, like, we that, can't uh, stay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's Smokes them out or something. Yeah, smoke yeah, them out. I agree. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they end up going out. Um, and it's like, it, it's a basic, like, cat and mouse game. Yeah, because I think at this point, they go up to the rafters, I think. This is then, cool. Yeah. And then uh, Peter, the director, is <clears throat> holding an axe. And he sees around the corner, he sees the bird man. And it's just just starts hitting him. Bird man. He starts seeing red. Yeah. He sees red. Yeah. He's yeah. just hitting and no nobody nobody's stopping him. Yeah. But turns out he killed Brett, the gay guy. Yeah. Which yeah. is uh, a nice little twist. I knew it wasn't gonna be the killer because yeah. it's halfway through the movie at this point. Yeah. But um yeah, and you have a lot of like very cool things right here because they're up in that like attic type area. Yeah. And the killer comes through the ground, doesn't he? He I pulls mean, um the preg the pregnant lady. Oh, oh yeah, yeah which is yeah. super this is the up. most brutal kill of the whole movie. I think man between yeah. this and apparently uh, anthropophagus, I was getting it mixed up. Yes, it's like a lot of trauma. Yes, yeah, yeah. baby trauma. Yeah, baby or trauma. pregnant trauma. Such a yeah, prego trauma. Yeah, because he basically tries to pull her up as she's getting pulled down. I still don't know what he uses here. And he, I guess he like cuts her in half with yeah. the like chainsaw. Pulls up. No, I mean, there's, you don't hear a motor or anything. You don't. Yeah. That's why it's stupid. It's a silent chainsaw. It's a silent chainsaw. No, he got a silent helicopter down yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, but he it's a chainsaw because yeah. he uses it on I the know. next guy. I know. I just I just complain because it's yeah. like you don't you never hear it. I know. Of course. But it's like a thunk, and then she's like just ripped in half and you're like, oh, my God. Boop. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Yeah. And then like, he pulls her up and then one falls down, right? It's Sting, the boyfriend or the, okay, he's supposedly, one that falls supposedly down. the dad of okay. this baby. OK. So and then was this guy from anything, by the way? I, Wait, I you read off a lot of I think I saw him in 11 days. 11 I wish nights. I wish <laughs> it was a little movie called 11 yeah. days, 11 nights. Um, uh, not a lot of movies. I think there's only like four or five movies on there. And OK, I'm going to look him up. He's got like, this like sting he, slash um, Kiefer Sutherland from Lost Boys look. <laughs> Michael, Michael. Um, but yeah, he's got a very distinct look that I yeah. feel like I've seen him in something as well. Um, but he ends up getting killed. He tries doing the the valiant, you know, the valiant hero yes. leap into I'm going to yeah. take this guy on. And, and then at this point, we only have a couple survivors left. We have our main girl. Yeah. And then Peter, we have the director. Director and then um, another girl. The other girl that kind of like betrays the main character. She's the one that's wearing the, oh, the red she's wig. She's the one. Yeah, they look identical. These yes. are the two girls that look identical. She's in the like movie. the one that basically gets the role after she, the, the and she like, kicks her off the ladder when she's like, yeah. help me. What is yeah. this scene? I forgot about this. Do you remember that? Like, yes. So like the redhead and she has like a red wig on at one point. Climbs up a ladder. 
And her friend's like, wait for me and grabs her ankle and she like, kicks her off and knocks her out. She falls down very far and just knocked down. The yeah. Door. And, and it was like, like the, why were you stressing to get up there anyway? Like you were there. It's OK. The like, girl's like looking down like, do I leave her or do I keep she going? Leaves her. Yeah, so she's, like that's their reasoning for like, OK, we can kill her now because she's a bad person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how does she end up dying? So when uh, at this point, Peter and then this this uh, other actress, the the redheaded lady, uh, they're making a run for it. OK. And the the bird man chainsaws her in the arm and then she's about to get the, the director and then the chainsaw basically. Oh, no, he cuts the, He cuts the director's arm with the, the chainsaw. So wait, how oh, does she die again? Yes. Okay, how's the girl die? So she gets slashed, but she she runs off. Oh, yeah, that's the yeah. most disturbing part of the that movie one's, she's that in the one's, shower. That yes. one's actually messed up. Yeah, she's yeah. in the shower hiding out. And then like the killer basically her dying. Says her, yeah. yeah, very disturbing. And scene. like the yeah. you see the meat. Like meat grounds, yeah. yeah. It's like really very nasty. Disturbing. Yeah, people don't die like they don't die as quick as they usually would. Yeah, in a slasher film, uh, there's two characters that kind of like die slowly, and the, the the girl on the stage. Yeah, when she gets stabbed yeah. in front of everybody, yeah. like she doesn't die immediately. She just kind of dies slowly. In your typical and, horror movie, it would be like a stab, you're dead. Yeah, yeah, but this one's like she's gasping for it her goes last on breath for a while. And... It's like a Jada Pinkett Smith uh, scream, yeah. scream two. Yeah, back to scream two. Exactly. Matt, do you remember Jada Pinkett Smith and scream yeah, two? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Um, um, so yeah, she ends up dying, and the director's death is pretty brutal. This is, I think, this is the the, the best one in the movie. Yeah, because he's kind of like the fighter through it all. Though it's funny because shortly before this, they run off, and Matt Matt says audibly, he's like, "Wow." Peter just be, is like basically the main character of this movie. And I was just smiling. And like five <laughs> seconds later, Literally five seconds later, he gets his arm chopped off. Yeah, because he ends up being a jerk there for a second. Like he's kind of your main character. And then he like loses the audience being a jerk. Yeah. I can't remember what he did. But yeah, and then he gets like he goes get the axe. His arm gets cut off. And then um, as he's like on the ground bleeding, profusely, yeah. tries to get the axe. The the killer takes the axe and then. Uh, promptly decapitates him. Yeah, it's brutal. And it's like a, no, thunk. Yeah. And then you you made uh you rewound it a couple times because it was like a cheetah, like a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it was a very odd sound. It's supposed to be the whoosh of <laughs> yeah. the axe. I, yeah, I actually heard it too. I was like, yeah. wow, that is very it's animalistic. a very odd sound. So now we just have the killer and our maid female actress. And, and the um the shower because at this point oh she, so they go to the shower yeah yes. she retreats and it's basically like I think when you pointed it out I was like wow this is kind of messed up yeah because she had retreated to like one of the shower stalls the uh, the main character hides in the other shower stall and then the killer like picks up the girl who's dying and like stabs her and the girl's looking at the main yeah. actress yeah. and trying to like communicate with her and it's a very disturbing <laughs> scene um but yeah she ends up getting away and then we got kind of our main like intense moment of the movie is when the main actress is underneath the stage yeah. and the main our villain is on top with all the bodies displayed it's a typical setup with like the um i feel like your sleepaway camp too sure yeah um well this is like the, or any of the friday 13th where you find out the bodies at the end my or halloween you yeah know, one by one. Oh, yeah. when she okay i think you meant like when the, she's under the stage the and she's trying to get the key through the, I was gonna say, like, the bodies that are all displayed are kind of yeah, like, yeah we actually yeah. start noticing some crazy cinema cinematography here this is the hitchcock influence of yeah. giallo movies yeah because she um, notices the key it's stuck between the crevice of two boards on the stage. And it's like in the four the foreground, like really detailed the yeah. key. And then the background, you see the the killer kind of lounging in that chair. It's yeah. really cool. Again. It's a very cool shot. Um, she ends up snagging the key. It's a very well done scene. It's very intense. She snags the key, gets away. The killer chases her. And then when she goes to unlock the door, she can't get it done in time. So this is a whole cool like, shot, too, where she's like running slow mo and it's like the key reaching out. The, yes. The key yeah. The, yeah. It's very cool. In the door. Um, and there's like this whole chase that goes on. And how does this end with? So, them? yeah, I think the, as she's like um, running away, she gets up to the top of the rafters, I think. Oh, yes. Somehow. Yes. Yes. And the, um, I think she's struggling with the killer. The killer falls off, but is grabbing on that rope. And he's so or no, it's like the one of the cabling, I think. And she's uh, killers climbing up and then, you know, she's chopping away at the uh, the wire, which she eventually does. But this is like the funniest scene in the entire movie, aside from maybe when they throw that dummy in the air. 
on the, the beginning the of the movie. Yeah, I totally forgot about uh, that. So, yeah. <laughs> they show the Oh, yeah, that part's really dumb. We didn't talk about yeah. that. Because I thought that was a part of the I actual it was, play. It was supposed to be like they're, they're like the, the prostitute in the air, but it's clearly a dummy, and then the dummy just hits the ground. It's, it's like, a very weird it's scene. It's a very like Carlton dummy from Fresh Prince yeah, where it's it gets very, thrown in the air. Yeah. But this scene is like uh, a top down view of the bird guy uh, climbing the rope. And when it cuts, it shows him like falling down and it's like full impact, but it's all like one shot. You're like, oh my God, that guy should be dead. I vaguely remember this. I need to see it yeah, again. It's but, like a one, yeah, one, one shot basically. Yeah. And that's quote unquote the end of Birdman. Uh, Birdman. Is Birdman from sunny Philadelphia or Eric Andre? The movie Birdman? Uh, it's a mix. Eaten. We're both, we're, I think I'm doing a mix of that. It's I think Bird Up, Bird Up, and up Green Man. Birdman. Yeah. yeah. Birdman. Green Man. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he dies. She gets out. Not they, even. What do you mean? He, I mean, he's still alive. He gets burned on fire, but then, oh, there's so many fake deaths, but then movie. even then he's yeah. still not dead. Yeah. My gosh. <laughs> um, but he eventually ends up dying. Yeah. Quote unquote. He is shot in the face by Willie. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Not even, not yet. What? So the, she alerts the cops outside. Oh, oh. the cops come in. And then this is like like, same day. This is messed up. They're like wheeling out body. It's like individual Ziploc. Yeah. Yeah. At one point, a guy walks out like just holding a bag. Like that's probably the half torso of the girl that got cut in half. He looks like like, they didn't even put that shit on a stretcher. They all like just walking around (laughs) like like it's like a trash bag. They all look like um, people the the crazed shoppers of Black Friday. Yeah. They're like grabbing whatever (laughs) they can. Coming out with their door busters. (laughs) (laughs) Jeez. They're human um, door busters. So like cut to like later in the day, our main character realizes, oh man, I forgot my watch. Oh, and so yeah. she meets up with the maintenance man from earlier in the movie. He lets her in. She goes to get the watch. Oh, I, I do have to bring this up. Yeah. Sorry, to set I you know, up for the exactly watch. This, is, this one like was the one like factual thing I had the most irritation with with the movie. Okay. When she's on the rafters at the top, her watch uh disables from her wrist yeah. and falls from the rafters or the catwalk. I'll say yeah, catwalk, catwalk. Sorry. Yeah. It falls all the way from the catwalk onto the floor of the stage, right? Yep. That's why later on in the movie, she's like, she realized at the end of the movie, she's realized, oh, I'm missing my watch. Yep. It must be at the theater still. Yeah. So it fell from the catwalk. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, and then she goes to get it and then uh she gets scared and drops it yeah she so she drops it from like four stories and it doesn't break and then from like three feet yeah from three feet from her hand to the floor it, it shatters yeah, like, like many pieces into many pieces yeah um but she ends up retrieving it the killer's still there and then the maintenance guy ends up shooting him after he talks over and over about like how guns work. Yeah. Yeah, because she's trying the, to use the gun in the uh in the climax or the climax, I guess, of the movie. And he was like, the safety was on. Yeah, yeah. like my science teacher talking about simple machines. Yeah. He's like, it's a ramp and it helps to uh <laughs> you just push the wheels yeah, up. He talks it about it forever. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like he It's had, like the most obvious information he explained. It's, like, it's on, almost man. like he had um that one line, like you gotta take the safety off, but like they never yelled cut because he thought that was the end. So he just kept saying it like, I guess they want to do multiple takes of it. Yeah. So just walk off the distance saying, you gotta take the safety off. Yeah. You gotta take the safety <laughs> off. Yeah. You hear him at the end, he's like, can I stop talking about this now? But yeah. <laughs> just over the, as the credits are rolling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he ends up saving the day. It's a gun and it fires like <laughs> little rockets. Little <laughs> <laughs> rockets. <laughs> uh, he saves the day, kills the killer. They leave. And then this I very did know about this random thing. This. It shows the killer on stage, shot in the forehead, and he kind of like I can't remember if he grins or winks. Eyes, yeah, like yeah. are like looking one direction. They fa- fixate to the uh, the camera yeah. at us and gives a little smile. And I was like, oh my god, I, I don't even. I maybe I turned it off after the gunshot. Yeah, but I do not remember this. And it's it's just really not, oh, you're stupid. one of those guys who yeah. walks up out of the movie yeah. at the movie theater, Dude, right? No. The, yeah, when it's, the, when the, it's, uh, it's what happened when I went to go come see. on, babe, it's beat traffic. It's, it's <laughs> basically it's what what happened when when I went to go see X in theaters recently. Okay. I had to go to the bathroom like since the beginning of the movie. So yeah. once like the last thing happened, I like dipped out. But apparently, I missed the trailer for a new movie that's coming out. Oh, that's and it's not available anywhere to watch. So oh, really? Yeah, interesting. Okay. Oh, not even now that the movie's streaming. Nope. Wow. Not even in the post credits of that movie. Holy shit! So that's very that. interesting. Okay. Uh, so that's stage fright from 1987. It has an 88% on Rotten Tomatoes, 
Uh, I'll go ahead and start off this time. Uh, I'll give it a, I'll give it a 60. Um, I was never bored. Um, it's a fun movie to watch. Um, it felt different, even though it's like uh, like a generic formula. I think it stood out. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Um, I, I I think I'll probably watch this again. So, yeah, yeah. I would say I'd give it a 60. Um, I would watch it again. I liked some of the how it went against some of the typical conventions of the giallo genre. Yeah. Um, and it, it attempted to set up characters as opposed to just kill them all yeah. off. Yeah, something that like, if you're if you're a fan of these Italian slasher films, um, they stop being mysteries right when they hit the 80s. And then yeah. they like kind of like because they're all really kind of mysterious about yeah. like who the killer is. This one's pretty straightforward. This one. But like yeah. at a certain point, it's like it's like it's very close, to, like demons. They're like, all right, now we're just going to kill everybody. Yep, yeah. yeah, and it kind of just it goes off, yeah. you know, off the rails. I found it. A, it was enjoyable. So, yeah, I'd give it a 60. I'd check it out again. Okay, I'd say uh, my answer still stands. This is one of my favorites. I'll probably get like even though I say I'll probably give it a seventy five. There's definitely some kind of boring moments. Sure, sure. But some of the kills in this movie is bonkers. But it's still not outrageous enough to be like unwatchable. Like some of those other really hardcore Italian horror movies. And some of those movies I can't even like watch. Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. stomach. But this is like New York Ripper, man. I still haven't watch seen New York Ripper. Okay. I'm yeah, a, it's I'm rough. A, yeah. <laughs> it's I remember a, it being one of the rougher giallos I've ever seen where I was okay. like, Ooh, I can't, this is, is that a, straight giallo? Is that is it like a monster or like no, a, it's a giallo. It's just a straight giallo. Yeah, okay. it's a straight giallo. But yeah, I think the, the concept is cool. The slasher like costume is pretty decent. Yeah. Um, okay. Kills are pretty up there as like really crazy. Shocking. So, yeah, shocking in a way. Yeah, yeah, it was gorier than I expected. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it kind of starts small and gets pretty outrageous by the end. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like, I'll definitely watch this again. Yeah, I think it's uh, this is up there. It's underrated. Cool. Yeah, no, I think it's good. I'm surprised I never heard of it. Uh, so, yeah, so two sixties and 75 percent from Cinema Cult. Uh, sounds like a recommend to yeah. me. Uh, we are going to continue Italian Giallo Month, which is my pick. I have never seen this movie. Same year, though, 1987. Oh, wow. Dario Argento's opera. Um, we kind of we've actually been back and forth with all these movies but I've been told from Hanzo and Matt that this is one of the funner ones to talk about. Yes. There's um, some cool, there's some very cool and crazy things that happen in yeah. this movie, which I'm excited because I've only seen, I think two Argentos. I've only seen uh, Tenebre and uh, Suspiria. Suspiria. Yeah. Uh, I've, yeah. I've seen mother of tears. I take it back. So I've seen those three and that's about it. Didn't you see uh, Inferno? I don't think so. I think you've watched Inferno. Yeah, Cause you, keep, bring, you keep bringing oh, up that the one with the water at the yeah. beginning. They yeah. drop the necklace. Yeah. I've seen most of it. Okay. Yes. Um, so yeah, so opera is a movie that is pretty high rated in the Italian giallo, um, genre. So I'm looking forward to watching it. Yeah. Um, I have not seen it, uh, both Matt and Hanto Once. have seen it. Once, um, a long time ago. A while ago, Matt, for you as well? Uh, about a year ago. I think I watched yeah. it during the pandemic. Okay, did you? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So yeah, looking forward to that for our Italian giallo month. If you have any requests or any remarks or anything you want to let us know, you can hit us up on Facebook. You can message us on Instagram or you can email us at simicultpodcast at gmail.com or leave us a message on anchor.fm. And as always, we love doing this. We hope you love listening to it. I'm Chris. I'm Matt. I'm Honto. And we'll see you next time.